Okay, in this video, I'm going to be doing a little test on these two graphics cards. Uh, the reason of the test is they're about the same price. We've got these two cards in at about $125, um, both brand new. This is the GTX 460, and this is a GTX 550 Ti. So I just wanted to kind of see what you can get for around $125, and these two just kind of fit the bill, you know, being about the same price. Granted, this card is, you know, a 60 series instead of a 50 series, but, and, you know, it's not a fair power comparison, but this is strictly a price comparison here. So even though this card is probably going to be more powerful than this card, um, definitely this has more CUDA cores. So that's one uh, one thing to think about in the beginning. I mean, we got a 336 against 192. Right off the bat, one would think that this one's going to win. But I'm going to test these two out, and we'll see uh, who the clear winner is for that $125 price range. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be uh, running a few tests uh, and comparing a couple of different graphics cards. Uh, the first one that I actually had on the test bench is a GTX 550 Ti, and the test bench is a uh, it's a Core i7 920 on an X58 motherboard, obviously, and uh, we are running the uh, 920 is at 3.3 gigahertz, and I have 12 gigabytes of RAM as well. Everything is running off of a OCZ SSD, and the 550 Ti has one megabyte of, excuse me, one gigabyte of memory, and a core clock of 951 and a memory clock of 2178. And I'm running uh, Nvidia's newest drivers right now. So I just completed the 3D Mark 11 on this system. And the score that I picked up was a 2874 with a graphic score of 2568 physics, uh, which is, you know, CPU dependent, and then uh, the combined score of 2709. So I think 2874 is pretty good. Um, it seems like that uh, I'm in, you know, th the higher end, I guess, of. Uh, a similar system so that's good and the kind of temperatures I got was uh, I got 59 degrees at a maximum on that with a fan speed of 56 percent or is that 58 58 percent uh, fan speed so the fan didn't get ramped up that much and I have a pretty aggressive fan profile on on uh, this system here I do to uh, get it spun up quickly to keep the temperatures down I like to keep them under 70 so um, now I'm gonna do an overclock test and see what we get out of this card with an overclock okay so I did uh, overclock uh, 51 megahertz so that brought it to 1002 megahertz and the P score we're getting now is 3001 with a graphics score of 2690 so you know, 3001 is a 127 point increase and 2690 is a 122 point increase. So we got some pretty good increases out of, um, you know, a 51 megahertz increase, which I had no problems obtaining. And I'm sure that the uh, could do better. I did not mess with the voltages at all. That's just a stock voltage and then bumping it up to 1002. Okay, so that will end the testing on the 550 Ti, and now we're going to move on to the GTX 460, and we'll see how the GTX 460 stacks up to the 550 Ti. Okay, so the specs on the 460, it is also the Gigabyte, and it is an 823 megahertz core clock. So that gave us a score of 4,092 with a graphics score of 3779. 
so that is better than the 560 Ti, or excuse me, 550 Ti, but obviously the 460 does have a lot more cores, uh, CUDA cores, and we're scoring right in the range. So, and also too, the 460 does require more power. As you can see, I have two six pins in there, and the 550 was uh, one six pin. So, get some better graphic scores, use a little more power, but definitely, um, just like this, we've got uh, almost 2,200, almost 2,200 uh, increase in the P score. And we are looking at about the same, about 2,200 points on the graphic score. So, the 460 would be a good step up from the 550 keeping in mind that these are uh, equivalent price points I guess that the, the point of my video here is kind of comparing these cards in the fact that they are similar price points so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn up the notch a bit and overclock the 460 and we'll see if uh, the scores improve significantly when we overclock the card okay so I jumped the clocks to 899 megahertz and I turned up a score of 4394 with the graphic score of 4088 so that is about a 300 point uh, addition there which is really good um, for 76 megahertz of course it's 76 megahertz over more cores than the 550 Ti so I mean I guess you have to look at it that way too I'm sure we generated considerably more heat and we definitely used more power um, we got to a max temperature of 61 degrees um, so you know definitely a little warmer um, definitely the fan was probably a little louder probably used more power but significantly higher score than the 550 and being that the two of them are the same price uh, kind of makes it a little harder to go for the uh, 550 Ti but I think we're at the point that uh, we're ready to uh, wrap this review up okay so that little bit of benchmark testing there clearly showed that uh, in 3D Mark 11 at least that the 460 whoops ass on the 550 Ti which you know honestly it is to be expected like I said, 60 series, 50 series, the TI, you know, that doesn't make much of a difference. we got less cores, more cores, you know, we're taking 6-pin power, and then we've got two 6-pin power. So obviously, this 460 was going to win, but like I said before a couple of times, the point of this test was to see for $125, where your better value is and I would take the 460 in gaming over the 550 Ti granted this can use less power um, at full bore you know but at idle they're probably similar I didn't have a setup to test the idle uh, usage but uh, power usage excuse me but I would guess that they're gonna be pretty similar idle maybe this one will beat it out a little bit because it is more efficient the 500 series is so perhaps if you're just looking for uh, Minecraft or something you know you could take this or you know a less intensive game um, this would be okay maybe World of Warcraft or something and you know setting the details down but if you wanted to set the details up higher and pay the same price um, definitely I would take a look at the GTX 460 so that pretty much wraps up my testing here, and as always, thank you for watching.